Hi, welcome to another quick tutorial on Parker Hill Bridge XR Toolkit for Unity. In this tutorial, we demonstrate the core features of Bridge XR with examples that do not depend on any specific device module or SDK. So the examples are a little contrived, though instructive. First, we'll set up a demo scene. We begin a new Unity project and add a ground plane with a sphere. We'll also create a materials folder and create two materials, one that's red and one with blue, and make our first sphere red. Next, let's install the BridgeXR package from the Unity Asset Store. For this demo, we will omit the examples folder because we're basically recreating the, the assets that are provided in that examples. The first step is to create bridge identifiers for the various devices that we will want to target in our project. For this example, we'll just call them device A and device B. So we create a bridge identifier for each device. And then using the bridge XR settings dialog, we will initially start by targeting device A. Okay, now that things are set up, we'll show you how to create a component bridge. Using a component bridge, you can selectively add one or more mono behavior components to a game object based on the current active bridge ID. So for this example, we'll create and use a custom C sharp script named Blink that enables, disables the sphere at a given rate. For device A, this component will make the object blink slowly for device B, it will blink faster. In your own projects, rather than using the same component with different property values, you may have completely separate components for device A and device B. In the script, you can see we have a public variable for the blink length. Then in start, we grab the renderer, initialize the timer and the visibility, and then on update, we bump up the timer, and if it's time, we toggle the visibility and reset the timer. So now with our simple script, we apply it to the sphere. And when you hit play, you can see that the sphere blinks at 0.5 seconds rate. OK, so now let's replace this component on the sphere with a component bridge loader that will load this component. The first thing we need to do is attach the component to a prefab that we can then reference. So we'll create an empty object named slow blink and attach the blink component and then save this as a prefab. Similarly, we'll create a, another object called fast blink, attach this object and set its component blink rate to 0.1 instead of 0.5 for this, in this case. Now on the sphere, we can delete the blink component and replace it with a component bridge loader. For device A, we want it to use the components attached to slow blink. For device B, we want it to use the component associated with fast blink now, when you hit play, the corresponding components are copied onto this object. For device A, we get the slow blank component. For device B, we get the fast one. Next, we'll demonstrate how to use a prefab bridge. Using a prefab bridge, you can selectively instantiate a prefab at a spawn point in your scene using the current active bridge ID. For this example, we'll add a cube to the scene, but it'll be a different color depending on the device. On device A, we'll instantiate a red cube. On device B, it will be a blue cube. For this, we'll use the prefab bridge. So to begin, we'll create the two versions of the cubes and save them as prefabs. We'll make a red cube and give it the red material and then drag that object into a prefabs folder 
and make it prefab, we can remove it from the hierarchy. Likewise, we'll create another cube called blue cube and save it as a prefab. Now in our hierarchy, we can create an empty object, we'll call it cube spawn and position it where we want the cubes to be spawned in the scene. Then we will give it a prefab bridge loader component and for device A, we'll specify that the blue cube should be spawned. Whereas for device B, the red cube should be spawned. Now, when you press play, depending on the bridge ID that is currently active, the scene will actually spawn the corresponding cube, either the red cube or the blue cube. There may be cases where you would need a child of the prefab that is part of the scene to be added as a child of the bridged prefab. For example, if a prefab is defining some device-specific behavior, but there's a child of it that is independent of the devices. To do that, in this example, we'll add a cylinder as a child of the cube spawn and give it a child of bridged prefab component. It references cube spawn automatically. Now when you hit play, the cylinder is automatically moved as a child of the spawned prefab, depending on which prefab is specified for the current active device. Next, we'll show an example of creating a scene bridge. Using a scene bridge, you can selectively load an additive scene to your current scene based on the current active bridge ID. For this example, we will add a UI canvas to the scene. For device A, we want it to be a screen space canvas. For device B, we need it to be world space. For this, we'll use the scene bridge. First, we'll create the scene space canvas in its own scene. We'll add a new scene, add a canvas, name it screen canvas, add a UI text onto the canvas, put the text screen space text, and then save it as a new scene and we can remove it. Likewise, we'll now create another scene and add a canvas. In this case, we will make it a world space canvas. Since it's in world space, we need to adjust its position and scale so that it fits correctly into the scene. We'll add a child text UI and have it read world space text. And then we can save this scene as the world canvas and remove it from the hierarchy. Now in the hierarchy, we create a empty object. We'll call it the canvas loader and add a scene bridge loader onto that. And then add bridges for device A and device B. For device A, we'll specify it should load the, the screen canvas. And for device B, it should load the world canvas. So now when we hit play, you can see that the corresponding scene is added additively to the main scene depending on whether your active device is device A for screen space or device B 
will load the world space. You also have the option that when it does load, it will merge with the active scene as opposed to having two separate scene hierarchies when it loads. So that's our demo. In this example, we set up a simple Unity project which targets two hypothetical devices, device A and device B. First, we created a component bridge to select the behavior of a sphere, that's sl slow versus fast blink, depending on the current target device. Then we created a prefab bridge to select the instantiation of a specific object, a red or blue cube, depending on the current target bridge. We also created a scene bridge to select the additive loading of a specific scene, a screen space or world space canvas, depending on the current target bridge. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Bridge XR, look us up on the Unity Asset Store under Bridge XR, where there's also links to the documentation, and you can request to join our Slack group. Thanks.